Hi, I'm John Potoshnik. Hey, thanks for uh, subscribing to my YouTube channel. I just sincerely appreciate that. 2017 I've, uh, has grown significantly in the numbers that follow my, my uh, videos, so I, I really appreciate that. Hopefully in 18, I plan to do a few more demonstrations and um, hopefully give, continue to give you good content. Apparently that's why you're signing up to uh, follow my, my channel, so I appreciate that. Um, this is the painting that's on my easel today, but I thought it's, I'll show it to you here in a minute, but I thought it's really interesting because I put this on the easel today to uh, continue working on it. I had blocked it in several months ago and put it aside because I had other projects to work on. And so today I put it on the easel, pulled out my little color study that I, I had done in preparation for it, and I realized that in December 18th, 2001, is when I completed that study, exactly 16 years ago today. So I just thought it's an interesting coincidence that of all things, today is the day that this goes back on the easel and I want to continue now and bring it to completion. Uh, the palette that I'm using for this painting is ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and lemon yellow. Those are the only three colors on my palette with white. All these others, of course, are mixed from those three. So I could legitimately, and I may mix some of the uh, complements and tertiary colors and put those on my palette as I need them. But the heart of the palette are the three primaries. But of course, as you look at the painting, you can see, no, there's nothing near that intense on the painting. The painting is very subdued, very neutralized, and uh, gray down, very high key also. So what has happened is, from those three primaries, I've mixed a lot of grays, and you get a gray by mixing all three primaries together in various uh, concentrations, plus white, and I get these effects. So the plan is, is to complete and continue on on this painting, and I'll do another video to show you how that's coming along. In my last um, YouTube video, I spoke that I would talk to you about pricing, how I price my paintings. And you might find that interesting. When I uh, began in fine art, I had left illustration just prior to that, and I thought, well, I can take my illustration prices and just move them right over into my fine art prices. Well, that didn't work at all. I found out very quickly, nothing sold. And so I cut my prices in half, still nothing sold, and I cut my prices in half again, and finally I started to sell everything. And it was at that point then I decided, okay, a good way to determine what, because the marketplace really determined what, the vet, what they thought the value of my paintings were, so I thought, okay, a good way to set a, a price structure is to figure out what a painting, what, uh, what uh, the price broke down to per square inch. And that's what I did. And people, you know, logically they would say, well, I don't want to pay as much for a small painting as I do for a big one. So in determining price structure, certainly the size of the painting is, has a, is a significant uh, part of it. And um, when I started off, I worked just primarily in small formats, you know, five by seven, maybe up to nine by twelves, because the purpose of that is I wanted to build a collector base as quickly as possible. And that really worked because I kept names and addresses of everybody and did monthly promotions, monthly newsletter to uh, encourage those people to continue buying. Because if you look at uh, the history of a collector, normally if they buy one, that is your best resource for another sale later on. So once the per square inch price was determined, and I do have kind of a sliding scale so that my smaller ones get slightly more per square inch than a larger one does. And then after that is determined what the total price of that painting is unframed, I'll purchase a frame and add the frame cost to it. Another determining factor for the price of a painting is the subject matter. And if you look at surveys that have been done, you'll find that landscapes are still the number one seller. 
I mean, but you have all kinds of genre. You have still life, you have figurative, you have portraits, you have uh, western, you have cityscapes. All of those are really, I mean, they're wonderful subjects. They just don't have the overall appeal, a mass appeal, uh, let's say, as a landscapes do. And so I know artists that uh, maybe will paint different subjects. They'll paint maybe a still life and they'll paint figurative and mm, landscape. If they're known for landscape, they may find that their still life and their figurative works, they can't get as much for them as they do for what they're known for. So subject matter certainly plays a part in how to price a painting. And then another huge one is the medium used. Oil is still at the top and uh, maybe acrylic slightly under that, but uh, generally, and this is a general statement because there are always exceptions, but generally watercolor, pastel, charcoal, pen and ink, they will not garner the price that an oil, that an oil painting does. And so we have the size of the piece affects the, the uh, price, the subject matter affects the price, and the uh, medium affects the price. Finally, the other one would be the reputation or the name recognition of the artist. And that's a real important one because sometimes name recognition can trump the quality because an artist is known and has established a reputation and that person happens to be the hot item, it doesn't necessarily equate to that their work is that great, but they have somehow through marketing or whatever been able to raise the prices of their paintings and people buy because of a name and not even so much of as subject or size or any of that stuff. So those are the main things that I think influence how a painting is priced and all those things of course come into the, how my work is priced. And finally, I'd like to just say that um, integrity in this business is really important. It's, it's, integrity is important in every business. I don't want to mean it just in painting. That's ridiculous. But integrity is really important. So once I, in my business, once I created a price structure, which I have now for years and years and years, and it goes up slightly each year because of inflation, just because I want to increase the value of my paintings. I'll make a small increase maybe each year or every other year or so. Um, never more than 10% at a time, but just small incremental increases. But integrity is real important. I don't ever uh, try to get more out of a person because I perceive they have more money. My prices stay the same across the board regardless of your uh, ability to pay. And I think that's an important principle to follow. I don't, I don't believe in taking advantage of people, and I think it's very bad policy to do so. And so integrity is real important, and I would encourage all of us as artists to maintain that. I hope this video has been helpful. We'll do another one. And uh, as this painting proceeds, and I look forward to meeting with you again. Thank you.